Hey guys, what up? Today we're looking at the 2009 Harley Davidson Electroglide, 2009 Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager. Uh, the first thing I like about this Harley Davidson bike right here is the chassis on it. They uh, upgraded the chassis for 2009 and you can really, really tell um, where, the, where the previous generation bike was a little bit cumbersome, didn't have quite as much ground clearance, didn't feel as short footed in the corner. This thing is night and day better. Like you can actually go into a corner and you can lean the bike over and it'll take quite a bit of lean before it starts dragging hard parts. And the amount of feel you get from the motorcycle is, is really, really, really good for, for, a, for a cruiser bike. I mean, with this machine, you can definitely surprise some dudes on sport bikes in the corner. I'm not even lying, like this bike handles that good. Uh, also really like is how comfortable it is. The, the seat on it is, is by far the most comfortable seat I've ever experienced on a motorcycle, in a house, in a chair, anything. Like I could take this seat and just put it in my living room and sit on that and watch TV all day and I'd be happy. It's that good. Also like the, uh, the sound of it. Um, that Harley Davidson thud, thud, thud is definitely very, very apparent in this motorcycle. I mean, you get on the gas and uh, it, the engine is not as loud as the Kawasaki, but the exhaust is louder and it just sounds, it sounds more pleasing. The tone is way more pleasing. Uh, overall though, the, this Harley Davidson motorcycle is a very, very easy bike to ride. You don't have to be tall. You don't have to be particularly strong. Um, the, it, it handles very nimbly. In, in the parking lot, it, its weight is actually feels pretty low, pretty centralized, and it's just really easy to kind of maneuver in the parking lot despite how big the motorcycle is. So overall, I mean, if you're looking for a for a motorcycle that you can throw all your stuff in, bring your girl or whatever with you, and just log miles upon miles upon miles with the stereo blaring, with the V-twin engine humming, with all the right sensations going on, this is the bike for you, without a doubt. Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager. This machine is all new for 2009 and it represents Kawasaki's big, big luxury touring motorcycle. Um, the thing I like about this motorcycle the most is probably this engine. Um, it's got a little bit more mid-range, a little more top-end power than the Harley-Davidson. Um, of course, it's liquid-cooled compared to the air-cooled engine in the Harley, so it probably should have a little bit more power, but definitely mid-range, top-end, a little bit stronger. It's nimble like the Harley Davidson, it turns side to side very effortlessly, but when you set in the corner, it just doesn't have that same level of confidence you do on the Harley. Plus, the ground clearance on it is really, really not so good. Like, lean it over a little bit and you're already dragging hard parts, where the Harley Davidson can lean over way farther before you start dragging stuff. The suspension, it's a little bit pogo-y, um, even for just one person on it with no cargo, no anything. It was a little bit pogo-y. When you hit a jump, it kind of pops up real quick and kind of gets a little bit unstable. So I can only imagine how much worse it could be if you had a passenger and all the all your bags full of cargo. But I really, really like the, the controls of it. Like it's really easy to use the radio, use the CB system, the weather system. Like it's easy. Like you just push the button and it, it's all right there. The Harley Davidson's system is a lot more confusing, a lot more fumbling, a lot harder to use. So in the electronics department, the Kawasaki definitely gets it. But then again, the Harley Davidson has way better speakers. Speakers are the Harman Kardons and the in the Harley sound phenomenal. They found just sound just like you'd get in a premium high performance automobile. Another good part about this Kawasaki motorcycle is the brakes. Um, not only is the front and rear brake more powerful than the brakes in the Harley Davidson, but the ABS system is, is much better. Um, the ABS system in the Harley, it, 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 when, you, when you start using the brakes and, it, and it, it, the ABS activates, the pedal pulses a lot and it doesn't really slow you down as effectively as the Kawasaki. The Kawasaki's pedal pulses too, but it's, it's a lot less intrusive and the bike actually stops quicker with the ABS. So why should you buy the Kawasaki? Probably if you're looking for a bike that's a lot more economical, it's not gonna cost you so much money, but you want all of the, the, the features and the touring ability and the performance, then the Kawasaki's your bike because it costs $4,000, $5,000 cheaper than the Harley. And uh, you get a lot of bike for the money. It's not at the same level as the Harley Davidson, but for the price, it's, it's pretty hard to go wrong if you're on a budget.